Uh, first of all, uh, Chris, I'd like to say thank you for doing this. Um, it was a great idea, and uh, I uh, respect. I was planning on doing a, probably three or four stories, but I decided to narrow it down to one. I feel like a lot of black families have a story or an event or you know some sort of um, huge event that's happened in the family history that informs how they feel and perceive um, race, the police, race relations, etc. So here's mine. When I was about four years old, I remember that my parents, uh, we were living in Brooklyn, and my parents said to me, um, we need to move, we're going to be moving um, to your grandparents' house, my dad's parents, grandmother and grandfather, um, to help out your grandmother. But I never knew what they meant. I didn't ask, I didn't think to ask. And um, I just knew that she needed help somehow, so we were moving there. So we moved in there, and um, and um, I remember that being enjoyable. She gave me uh, piano lessons, and um, and you know, I remember I used to get up early in the morning and and see my grandfather off to work and and all that. So um, I found out maybe six years ago, five years ago, that uh, the reason that she needed help is because my dad's older brother, my dad's the youngest, um, he, he had a brother, Linwood, who was three years older, and he has a brother, um, an older brother than that, uh, Clarence. So um, I found out the reason that she needed help is because she was distraught. She was uh, inconsolable uh, regarding her middle son, Linwood, being killed uh, by the police and, um, in July of 1972, 73, something, something in there. And um, so I knew that my um, uncle had been killed by the police and that there was some sort of uh, something foul went down and um, and it wasn't justified, but I didn't really know, still don't know that much about it. But uh, I interview, I had my kids interview uh, my mom and that more, a lot of details came out then. And um, I found out that he was shot in the temple at point blank range and that he had powder burns on his face and that um, this only happened maybe a block or two away from my grandmother's house and um, so she had to go out of her way to avoid it was July and um, his blood was all over the sidewalk. So um, my dad told me that it went to a uh, a grand jury, and but you know nothing ever came of it regarding. Uh, I mean, as you can imagine, uh, that happens a lot nowadays. I can't imagine how often it, it you know it was you know nothing ever came of a um, improper shooting in the early seventies. So. Um, a memory that I had um, while thinking about all this for uh, for this video that the memory I had hadn't had in 30 years is that I used to wake up um, I think when I was living there or I would come there during the summers also and um, I would hear my grandmother talking loudly to somebody and I would think, oh, I, I wonder who's here or what have you. And, um, you know, it's, I, I'm creeping down the steps trying to find, you know, 
figure out who she's talking to. And she was praying, but it was a, you know, almost like a Old Testament, um, you know, God, why have you forsaken me and, and, and taken my son, you know, um, type of, you know, like wailing type of um, situation. And this is something that I would, you know, this happened many times when I was younger. And, um, and I totally did not remember this until I started um, thinking about the whole incident. Um, so I talked to my dad about it today and, um, he told me, I guess, as he's going through different things, he found my, um, he found my uncle's resume, um, that he was preparing. He had graduated, uh, college and he was home and, um, he was either going to, uh, get a job. He also been accepted into uh, graduate school as well. So that was all going on, and then he was uh, snuffed out. So uh, anyway, they say uh, say their names. Uh, his name was Linwood Wilson. <laughs>